Please be seated. Court is now in session. Today we will continue to hear the testimony of this civil party, Soi Sen. And Mrs. Sakobuti, could you report the attendance of the parties and individuals to today's proceedings? Sakobuti, Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present, except Arthur Rebkang. Defense counsel for Kiss and Porn is absent due to his health. And Miles Ray is a new civil party lawyer recognized by the Bar Association of Cambodia, but not yet uh, recognized by the trial chamber. And Mr. Nunti is present in the holding cell downstairs as he waves his rights to be a present in the main courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the Grafie. And the civil party, Mr. Soi Sand, is ready in the courtroom, and we don't have a reserve witness for today's proceedings. President, thank you, Ms. Sekoboti. Chamber now decides on the request by Noon Chia. The Chamber has received a waiver by the accused Noon Chia dated 3 February 2015, who states that due to his health, namely backache and headache, and that he cannot concentrate for long to be present in the main courtroom and for effective future participation. He requests to waive his direct present for today's proceedings. And his counsel also advised him about uh, this, wa this waiver, which does not mean that he waives his rights to a fair trial or his objection to any of the uh, evidence presented before uh, this court. The chamber also has seen the medical report by the duty doctor at the ECC who has examined uh, Nunchi's health. Report is dated 5th February 2015, and it is noted that Nunchi has backache and dizziness while sitting and recommends that the chamber shall allow him to uh, follow the uh, proceedings from a holding cell downstairs. As aforementioned and pursuant to Rule 81.5, the Chamber grants Noon Chia's request to follow the proceedings remotely from a holding cell downstairs through a remote means. And as he waves his right to be present in the courtroom, and the AB unit you instructed to link the proceedings to the holding cell downstairs so that Nunchi can follow the proceedings uh, remotely. And that applies for today's uh, proceedings. And the uh, chamber will next request uh, Mr. Pik Ong to request for the recognition of a new civil party uh, lawyer who has not yet been recognized by the chamber. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors, and everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, I uh, will be absent from uh, the uh, proceedings from tomorrow until uh, before uh, the new year. 
the Khmer New Year in April, and uh, Mr. Van Pe will take uh, my place. As for the new uh, foreign uh, lawyer who is uh, behind me, that is my S. Ray. He is a Singaporean uh, lawyer and who has been uh, recognized. And and recognized by the by Association of Singapore in February 2011, and who also has been recognized by the by Association of Cambodia on the 2nd August 2013, and also took an oath at the Court of Appeal of Cambodia on the 14th of November 2013. He works together with uh, his national uh, counterpart, that is uh, Sam Sukung, and I would like to request uh, your recognition of the new lawyer. Thank you. President, thank you, uh, Council. And uh, Mr. Maes Ray. You are hereby recognized by the trial chamber as an international lawyer for civil parties for the purpose of uh, proceedings uh, before this court. In this case, and through such recognition, you have the same rights and privileges as other civil party lawyers. You may be seated. The chamber would like now to hand the floor again to the prosecution to continue putting uh, questions to this uh, civil party. Uh, please wait, and Council Kong Sam On, you have the floor. Kong Sam On. Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning, uh, Your Honours and everyone. I have a small request to be made uh, to Your Honour. It is in uh, regards to the opposition by the prosecution. That is document A327-4. It uh, states that the uh, co-prosecutors uh, copies the document to uh, Tugolet and Khao In Sander as the uh, counsels for the accused. I understand that the decision by the trial chamber, that is E3 through 1 slash 2, on the uh, court appointed uh, lawyers for Kiwa Samporn. And it is my understanding that uh, the instruction by the trial chamber is that the two uh, counsels are not involved in the proceedings before this court until such time there is an order from the trial chamber to do so. And therefore, in the document by the co-prosecutors who stated that these two lawyers are the defense uh, lawyers, the implication is that they are involved in the uh, defense and the uh, proceedings before this court, and that leads to a misunderstanding. <coughs> For that reason, I'd like to request the trial chamber to issue an instruction not uh, uh, for the uh, prosecution not to uh, do this again, or maybe the trial chamber can seek uh, an explanation from the co-prosecutors as why they consider these two uh, counsels as the and counsels for my client. Okay, and the uh, international co prosecutor, uh, you may proceed. Bonjour, Monsieur le Président. Good morning, Mr. President. Your Honours, good morning to all the parties. In response to what counsel for Kia Sampan has just said, it is true that it would perhaps have been. Uh, better for us to write standby lawyers on the cover page of the motion which we place on record. But in any case, it has always been stated by the chamber, by your chamber, that even though these lawyers are not yet exercising their 
duties as counsel for Kies and Sampan. They are um, authorized to take stock of uh, all the documents, and that is why their names are mentioned on that document. That is just what I wanted to point out, Mr. President. President, this is a uh, minor issue, and uh, please be mindful and uh, don't repeat uh, that uh, issue again. In the f uh, future submissions, please uh, make it uh, clearly as to who are the defense counsel and who are the uh, standby uh, counsels. I think we can deal uh, with that. And now the chamber would like to see the floor again to the co-prosecutors to uh, putting questions to this uh, civil party. You may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Salsin, I will examine you up to about 11 a.m. this morning, and I would like to revisit a point that you raised yesterday. We discussed your interrogations in 1974 after you arrived at the Krang Tachang Security Center. You stated that you were interrogated regarding your relations with a person called Antasan. I would like to read out to you an extract of your, the record of your hearing, E3-5214, the ERNs are as follows, in Khmer 00223058, in French 00702889, in English 00225529, Zero 03. And this is what you stated, and I quote, there were three interrogators, and then there was a soldier who was there to monitor the interrogation. During the interrogation, I was asked, did you have contact with Prum San? I replied that I don't know him. Then they said, tell the truth. I still replied, I still do not know him. Then the interrogators had the soldier who was the guard take me back and shackle me. So you mentioned the name of that person. Who was that person called Prum San in regard to whom you were interrogated? I was asked whether I knew Prum San, and I said no, I did not. Prum San was a choice of a traitor, but I did not know him. Were you able to learn from the guards at the prison whether Prum San fought during the Five Year War on the side of the Khmer Rouge? or on the side of Lonnol? I didn't know which side he was in. 
I only knew that uh, during the, that time, uh, Prom San was accused of uh, being a traitor. On the following page of the same document I have just quoted in all the languages uh, providing the ERNs, this is what you stated. At the time of my detention, the other I know that the other prisoners were only interrogated with regard to the history of Prumsan, end of quote. Question, did you have an opportunity to discuss with the other prisoners to find out what they were interrogated about during their interrogation? No, I did not know because uh, we were uh, circled together at night time. We were just uh, whispering to one another. For example, uh, one prisoner said he was accused of uh, being connected with a former regime because his uh, sibling or a relative had um, uh, a rank of a major or a captain. Merci. Alors, thank you. For the record, I would like to state that the name Prumsan was found in Tramkak archives, and that person was mentioned on several occasions in certain reports on the Tran Chan uh, camp. I give the references of the three documents, amongst others. This is E3-4095. The Khmer page ERN is 00271090 up to 91. In French, it is 00721206. And in English, 00747237. The name Prumsan also appears in a report of statements by prisoners Sun Sen and Sun Siang. The report is E3-4101, and the Khmer ERN is 00271039. In French, 0085-4221. And in English, 00322129. And lastly, the third example among the other documents is document D157.7. And the Khmer page ERN, there are many pages 0027-0883. To 84, and also on page 00270886, and on page 00270891. In French, it is on page 0087-2809. Zero zero eight seven two eight two four and zero zero eight seven two eight two nine and lastly in English zero zero eight six six four four six up to four seven zero zero eight six six four five zero and Zero zero eight six six four five six. Mr. Salsen, uh, I'd like us to talk about some prisoners of a long duration at Prang Tachan. You mentioned Tachin yesterday and Tanon, and you said that they carried out certain activities with you, bringing pr prisoners 
who are, who are tortured for interrogation or digging pits for the executed persons. I will quote an extract once more of your transcript or record. E3 slash 5214, the Khmer page is 003064 in French, 0070-2895, and in English, 0022-5508. And this is what you stated regarding those who dug pits, and I quote, apart from myself, there was Tanon and Tachen. Tanon died after having been beaten at Frank Tachan office. His crime was being a Hanoi person. Later on, Tanon was a prisoner who had received a lighter sentence and was ordered to work in the prison, like myself. He was assigned to work in the prison, in the quick kitchen, to prepare food for the prisoners. While in the kitchen, he spoke to me. He said, I'll probably die before you. During that conversation, suddenly Chen, a soldier at Krang Tachan, came to call him. Since he had disappeared for a long time, I walked to look at the site where they killed the prisoners, and I saw his body. He had been killed and placed under a chertiel tree about 70 meters from the prison, end of quote. Regarding this extract from the record of your interview, why did you say that Hanoi was considered guilty because he was someone from Hanoi? Because he came from Hanoi and he married a woman in some round commune who was a pure Khmer. And later on, uh, he was sent to be detained at the Grand Tachan, and I learned that information from him. Apart from Tachin and Tanon, were there any other prisoners like yourself who enjoyed a particular status? That is to say that they were able to move about within the premises of Krang Tachan. No. And as I stated yesterday, there were only four or five of us who were allowed to work within the prison compound, and there was no other person who was allowed to do so. Est-ce que vous pourriez nous donner les noms des can you give us the names of the persons who are authorized to move about within the compound of the prison like yourself? Yes, I can do that. Uh, a group of yinyos, uh, siblings or relatives, yinyo, tachan, kat, and uh, non, and hun, uh, a female, and that's all. Thank you. I had some names in French very quickly. You said in your civil party application, reference number D22-1370, just trying to clarify what I heard, that it was not translated in, in English in entirety in French. It is zero. 1057607 and in that's the French 01057607 you said an ordered car one of the sons of the old no N H O R and myself to dig pits to bury executed persons Every day, the Khmer Rouge killed at least one or three people after having tortured and interrogated them. It, sometimes they executed between 50 and 100 prisoners a day. Now, you mentioned two names. Please 
clarify who was the old N no N H O R you refer to in this extract. Junior or grandmother Nyo was a cook in the dining hall in the prison compound. Est-ce que vous connaissez son nom? Do you know the full name of that person and that person's current name? No, I only uh, know her uh, first name. I never knew her uh, family name. Que savez-vous de ce Ka? Ka? What do you know of the person called Ka? K-H-A. You said he was one of the sons of the old No, who also had to dig pits for burying executed persons. Do you know the full name of that person? No, I only know uh, the, the first name, uh, Ka, uh, who was uh, younger than me, Ka was the son of uh, Yin Yo. One day, the John uh, got sick, and I asked him uh, to, to, to lend me his hand, and then we uh, uh, dragged a prisoner together. But he was uh, smaller and younger than me. Very well. I would like to show the civil party a document, and it is document E3-4145. I would also like to have that document placed on the screen, Mr. President, by your leave. And then we'll show the document to witness. Yes, uh, you may proceed. Regarding this document, we'll first look at the first page. The ERN in Khmer is 0006873030. In French, it is 0076-1093. And in English, 0076-2837. It is a table titled List of Prisoners Detained for Months or Years Subject to the Decision of the Party. Please tell me, do you know the names of the long-duration prisoners at Krenta Chan? First of all, look at the first name on the list. That is Yit Chen, aged 51, from Nengyang Commune. And it is said that he was arrested in error. At least that is what we gather from the French translation. Yes, uh, I do. I uh, didn't know what offense he, he was alleged to, be, uh, to commit. He came in a group of six, and uh, the rest died except uh, the Chen. As uh, for uh, the uh, letters uh, in the document before me, I, I cannot read because I am illiterate. I studied very little, and I uh, cannot uh, do the reading at all. I understand. I will continue reading the list. And underneath the name Yit Chen... was uh, the person identified the same uh, that was identified by Da Chin. Answer, it was the same person. And uh, it was said that O Chen and uh, my Nyo should be uh, married together. Le deuxième nom, ce qui apparaît sur 
The second name that appears on the list is a person called Hun Seng, 46 years of age, coming from the village of Shreikur, commune of Qingtang, Qingtong, rather, district of Tramkak. And in another column, there is mention of Witsaret, 26 years of age, from the same commune, and also from Srecourt. The note reads as follows. These two women were the spouses of Kum and Bun. We smashed uh, their husbands because of their involvement in inciting people to depose a village chief. Do you recognize the names of these two individuals? That is to say, Hun Seng and Mias Surat. Uh. Answer, yes, I knew them. Hun Seng was the husband of uh, Grandmother Nyo, and Bun was the in-law of uh, Grandmother Nyo. So I knew this family. Mia Sarat, I knew Mia Sarat also. Mia Sarat was the uh, daughter of uh, Grandmother Nyo. Just now, you said that Ye Chin and Yin Na, two people who are on this list, were slated to be married. Who was to perform their marriage? My answer. Uh, it was a joke at that time. They said it was said that Au Chen and Mai Nyo should be married together here, so the family uh, should stay here all together. See, this is a joke uh, that was said at that time. Very well. I'd like to refer to another page of the same document, just a bit further on at uh, Khmer reference 00068736. In French, 00761100. And in English, 00762844. This is a table entitled Names of Prisoners from M105 Detained for Years pending the party's decision. I'll ask you the same question. There's a first name on the list. That name is Yuxen. I would ask uh, the assistance of the Khmer interpreters who uh, have the document and a signal that it is spelt Y-U-K-S-E-N. The village is identified as Trepeng Lin, Commune of Kus, district of Tramkak, uh, profession is farmer. And within the uh, column of annotations, uh, it is written, in 1974, he was a youth who was sent to the front battlefield, but he escaped home. Can you please uh, identify that person, Yuk Sen? Answer, yes, I knew. Could sign. I knew this person. I was asked to uh, stay in uh, militia units, and I did not stay there. I escaped home. I escaped home long ago, and after that, I traded uh, woods, and I traded woods uh, with uh, Chinese. So I uh, went to uh, collect woods and uh, trade it with Chinese. At that time, I uh, used the name Kut Sain. Uh, this name was uh, named by uh, grandmothers. President, you may not proceed. Uh, Litko lawyer. Mr. President, in document F3 slash 4145, 
the name was not written as Yod Saim. It was written as Kut Saim instead. And, and I heard the interpretation of was uh, Yud Sain, but actually this name was uh, written as Kut Sain. Merci pour cette précision. C'est donc un, une erreur. I believe, therefore, that there seems to be a translation error in this document. I'd like to quote two other names. Uh, those names are Hulna and Mies Rat. Those names appear on this list. President, you may not proceed, uh, Mr. Cope. Excuse me, Mr. President. I was just not able to follow so quickly uh, what my learned friend from the Civil Party said about the names. Uh, would he be so kind to repeat what he just said so that I can follow? Little lawyer. In fact, uh, the document referred to by a co prosecutor, I could observe that uh, co prosecutor referred the name as a yut sign, but actually in Khmer document it was written as kut sign, so the name is kut sign. The, the alphabet in Khmer. Uh, is quite similar in writing. So when it's come to interpretation, uh, I heard it was uh, referred to as Yud Sain, but actually the name is Kut Sain. Thank you. You may now resume your questioning, uh, Mr. Co prosecutor. Merci. Thank you. So on the second uh, list that we are focused on, President, Mr. Soi Sain, when you answer the question, you should speak slowly because uh, what you said, what you are saying, uh, will be interpreted into official languages of the courts to make proper records in the interpretation. Please speak slowly. Do you understand, Mr. Soi Sain? But you're locked in. Yes. I understand, Mr. President said a witness, said civil party president. You may now resume your questioning, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. Thank you, President. So we were dealing just now with the second uh, list of prisoners from M105. You recognized your own name, and you also recognized uh, Hun Na and Mies Rat. Can you please tell us if Hun Na and Mies Rat are indeed the same names that appear on the first document and the same people that you had identified as um, Mies Rat and Old Noor? Answer. It was the same uh, person, the mother and uh, the daughter. One final question on this document. Uh, names of prisoners from M105. At the time, had you heard about M105, and what did it mean? Answer, I did not know. I heard only sector 105 instead. District. I heard only District 105 instead of uh, M105. Très bien. Uh, yeah. Very well. Yesterday, on the subject of Lon Nol people or April 17 people, they were considered prisoners or 
uh, captives of the war. Can you please tell us who referred to them as prisoners of war or captives of war uh, at Kantachan? But like answer the soldier and the chief of the prison, they used the term uh, prisoners of war at that uh, place. Can you please specify once again uh, what, quote, 17 April, uh, unquote, meant? What did the expression mean? Was it strictly referring to 17 April people or officials and of, uh, officers of the Lono regime? Shortly speaking, all prisoners were referred to as uh, prisoners of war. Merci. Thank you. In your in a testimony before this chamber, we heard the uh, statements of Mia Soka. She appeared on the 21 or 22nd January and was transported uh, to Kantachan with some 100 people with Yang Yam and another person. I'd like to quote from E1 stroke 219.1 from the hearing of 21 January at approximately uh, 12 o'clock. Mia Soka says the following. There were about 130 people. The 130 people were taken to the security center. And further on, it reads, these people were not interrogated. The next day, before this chamber, Mia Soka said in E1 stroke E2 15.1, at approximately 10.51 in the morning. On that day, more than 100 prisoners were killed. However, I do not know the exact figure. End of quote. At 10.56, uh, he said, I interpreted correct, I learned that the prisoners were executed and I uh, had to bury the bodies. Do you also recall a group of some 100 to 120 prisoners who were not interrogated but who were executed at Khang Tachan? Answer. I knew about that. I did not count uh, the numbers of prisoners. It was presumed that there were around 100 uh, prisoners they came in 1977. Was that the only occasion when some 100 and 130 people arrived, uh, or were there other occasions? Answer. They came uh, on different occasions. They came from uh, Srayana Nung and Nyenyong commune. It, it is true about that. Je voudrais maintenant. I want to return to what you raised yesterday when you said that in 1977, there were also uh, many arrivals and executions at Khang Ta Chan uh, when Vietnam attacked Cambodia. When the Vietnamese attacked, was there an influx of Khmer Krom or of Vietnamese at Khang Ta Chan? Answer. At that time, I did not know about uh, where the people came from or what ethnicity were in that uh, prison. Most uh, prisoners 
that I could see the uh, uh, James people. They did not eat uh, pork. That is why I knew that uh, some of them were a uh, jam. Oui, je parlais de. I was referring to the Khmer Krom. Khmers from Kampuchea Krom. Were you able to identify uh, certain prisoners as people uh, of Khmer speaking people from Vietnam? My army. Answer, I never observed uh, those people, so I did not know. Uh, I'd like to quote a segment from one of your records of interviews before the investigators of the investigating judges. Perhaps this can assist in refreshing your memory. I'd like to refer to E319.1.24. I will not give uh, the ERNs. The responses are numbered. I'm referring to response 82 to response 91. I'd like to read to you what you said, and I quote. Response number 82. The Khmer from Kampuchea Khom arrived in 1975. Response number 83, they arrived uh, over the course of time up until 1978. The Khmer from Kampuchea Khom were not in prison for very long. In one or two days, they were executed. Sometimes they came in groups of three or five. Question, in what year were there the highest numbers highest number of Khmer Khom in the prison of Khang Ta Chan, response number 84. That was in 1977 when the Vietnamese attacked. It was also when the Khmer Khom uh, arrived uh, as an influx in Khang Ta Chan. At the time, the Khmer Khom were called Vietnamese. The Khmer Rouge treated them as Vietnamese. In 1977, the Vietnamese wanted to attack Cambodia, but the Khmer Rouge counterattacked. Question, after 1975, did the prisoners or guards talk about the Khmer from Kampuchea Khom? Response number 87, or 86 rather, yes, they did talk about them. However, they labeled them as Vietnamese because they lived in Vietnam and spoke Vietnamese. Question, did they talk about a policy of extermination of the Khmer from Kampuchea Khom, response number 87, no. However, as soon as the Khmer Khom arrived, they were executed. Response number 89, the Khmer Rouge uh, said that the Vietnamese spoke Khmer with an accent. Or, uh, response number 90, they did not speak Khmer very well. They were only imprisoned for one or two nights. That's it. And lastly, your Final response, 91. I saw one or two executions of the Khmer Khom. But you know, they executed Khmer Khom each and every day. End of quote. Do you recall having said that to the co-investigating judges? President. Please hold on, Mr. Witness. Uh, Victor Cope, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this is not actually an objection, but um, a request for clarification. I appreciate the translation given by the interpreter, um, but if we were reading all along, we could see the use of a different word. I'm not quite sure if this has been ruled upon, um, but in the translation of his statement, I see uh, a different word used for Vietnamese. So what is exactly, are we quoting his statement uh, literally or are we allowing this word to be uh, avoided? Uh, 
Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, with this particular document, it is obviously that the interpreters have to work with it on a simultaneous basis. Therefore, there may be some slight uh, discrepancies between what is written and uh, what is spoken. I read aloud what was written in French, uh, which was a translation of what the civil party said. There's nothing more to be said about that. Mr. Civil Parties, is that indeed what you said to the investigators of the co-investigating judges? I have a different translation in English, then. If, if you're using the word Vietnamese, I have a different translation uh, in the English version. So I, I would like to find out, are we circumventing a word? Okay, look. President, international co-prosecutor, could you clarify this concerning uh, the the, na the word used uh, and also the interpretation? Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. I did not verify up until just now the term that is used in English. I was only working with the French version. Uh, the interpreter notes that it is the French version that the interpreter is working with. And in English, indeed, the word yun is used. The word yun does not appear in the French translation um, in uh, replacement of uh, the yun. The word Vietnamese is used in the French version. President. You may now resume your questioning. The two words uh, may have the same meaning, so and in Khmer they quite sim they are quite similar. So you may now resume your questioning, Mr. Co Prosecutor. Monsieur la partie civile. Mr. Civil Party, the passage that I have just read aloud from uh, your written record of witness interview before the co-investigating judges, does it refresh your memory regarding what you said uh, concerning the Khmer Khom, the Vietnamese, or the Yun? Answer. I was interviewed by journalists and I I uh, only knew that in that place, if people did not speak very well, they were referred to as Yuan, and I did not know about uh, the term used. People were referred to as Khmer Crown. It's good. And those who do not speak uh, Khmer correctly, they were designated as Yuan. Did they, uh, were they subject to interrogation or not, or were they immediately executed? In 1977, I uh, already informed the court repeatedly there was a uh, fighting at the border and when these people came and arrived at uh, the, of the security office, uh, some uh, were put there for a short while and some uh, were taken to uh, the killing place uh, subsequently. Merci. Thank you. I'd like to approach another subject, that being communications between the Security Center of Khang Chan and District 105. I'd like to quote uh, E352 or E3 stroke 5214. Khmer reference 00223068. In French, 00702899. And in English, 00225511. The 
You said the following. When the messengers from the Kantachan uh, Center took letters to the district of the chief, and there were words written in red on the back of the envelope. When the letter arrived at the end of the afternoon, the massacre of prisoners happened the next day. A soldier named Nim had the opportunity to talk to me about this matter. In seeing this letter, he would always complain to me that the next day there would be work to do. The messengers from Kang Tachan were named Saksarin and Un. Mr. Civil Party, who at Kang Tachan was in charge of carrying messages, messages between Kang Tachan and District 105 before April 17, 1975? Yes. The messenger answer the messenger name. I did not know the surname, and I before I had known only uh, Run and Nguyen. They were and Un. They were passengers. They were uh, messengers, rather. Qui était chargé? Who was in charge of playing that role as a messenger after the 17th of April 1975 up until 1979? It was a son. I didn't know the surname of a son. Est-ce que vous avez vu à l'inverse? Did you see the messenger from the district come to Krang Tachan Center, or was always the messenger at Krang Tachan who went to the district? I only saw this district uh, committee. And he was accompanied by his uh, messenger. He came on a uh, motorbike, and actually, uh, he came rather frequently. Est-ce que vous avez vu si le comité du district? Did you notice the? District committee or district head come to Krang Tachan Center with envelopes. I did not see the district uh, committee deliver any letter. It was uh, only the messenger who delivered uh, the letters. But when the district committee uh, came to the center, he would be accompanied by his messenger. Et ce messager, quand il venait, when that messenger came to the center, did he himself bring some mail? The uh, messenger brought uh, letters uh, to Kanatachan's uh, chief, and he would uh, meet the chief in his office near the uh, dining hall. I will read out or quote another passage from your record of interview, E319.1.24. Answer 99, this is what you stated, and I quote, Yes, I saw a letter from the Supreme Anchor in which were the names of those who are to be exterminated. In fact, I saw these kinds of letters written in red ink practically every day. Answer 100. In fact, the messenger had in hand the letters in question. Then Deutsch 
typed the reports. Answer 101 Deutsch wrote reports on people who had been exterminated. Question, you talked of a messenger. Are you referring to Son? Answer 102, yes, that is true. End of quote. Vous avez dit que concernant les... Now, in this extract, you said that Deutsch typed reports on people who had been exterminated. Bearing in mind that you did not know how to read, did you find out whether Deutsch also wrote reports on people who had been interrogated but had not yet been executed? I did not know about that because I didn't dare ask him. When Sun brought letters from the district to Krangta Chan Center, who did he give those letters to exclusively? Or in other words, did he give the letters to only one person? Through my observation, uh, he would deliver the letters to any of the three, that is the chief and the deputy uh, chief and the member of the uh, prison committee. And what did the prison committee members do after receiving the mail or the letters? Did they give any instructions? Occasionally, once they receive the letters, they will uh, assign their uh, soldiers to act upon. For example, if they uh, receive the letter today, then they would assign the soldiers to act upon it tomorrow. And when you say that they had to act upon them, what do you mean precisely? What did those soldiers have to do? For example, when a red ink was used on the back of the envelope, although I didn't know how to uh, read, the red ink means the prisoners had to be smashed. So if, uh, if it was a, a matter of urgency, the prisoners would be killed on the same day. Otherwise, uh, they would be uh, smashed uh, the next day. Merci. Thank you. I have a few questions for you regarding uh, tortures and beatings during interrogations. You referred to that yesterday after 19, April 1975. I am referring to interrogations that you witnessed. From what you were able to observe or learn on the spot, what was the objective of interrogations at Krang Tachan? The, the purpose of the interrogation was the same as I stated earlier. That was uh, in relation uh, to uh, CIA uh, spies or uh, whether they had any connection uh, with uh, Prum San. Que vous avez Did you have the opportunity to hear with your own ears the questions that were asked during those interrogations? Yes. 
When I was uh, sweeping uh, nearby, I heard the, uh, the interrogator, and I was the only one who was allowed to uh, uh, do the uh, sweeping there, uh, near the interrogation office. I believe you also stated earlier that some questions had to do with the ranks of the soldiers of the former regime. Is that indeed what you stated? Yes, uh, that is correct. During the interrogations, during the interrogations, from what you were able to observe, the, the recourse to torture something that was quite frequent, or it was rather rare? Based on my observation, if uh, the prisoners were rather old, or maybe they uh, were alleged to have a connection with the former lunar regime, then they uh, would be tortured. As for the better uh, people, maybe only two or three out of ten uh, would be tortured during the interrogation. Yesterday you referred to some types of torture. You talked about beatings and the use of plastic bags. Regarding beatings, were the prisoners struck with uh, bare hands or with uh, objects? They use a uh, bamboo club about uh, 70 or 60 centimeter long uh, to beat the, uh, the prisoners. And there were three or four uh, bamboo clubs uh, in uh, the other uh, room. Que vous avez jamais vu ou Did you ever hear or see prisoners whose fingernails were forcibly removed during interrogations? No, I didn't know about that. I knew about the use of a, a, a plier. A plier was used to uh, extract or to, to hurt the, the breast or the nipples of the of female prisoners. Was this practice of torturing prisoners during interrogations continue between 1975 up until the arrival of the Vietnamese uninterruptedly? By uh, 1979, it became uh, less and less as uh, some of them had fled to the forest. Only uh, some were uh, remained at the uh, center. And there were also less uh, prisoners there. And the, uh, when the Vietnamese troops arrived, we broke uh, the uh, chain and the key, and then we ran to the uh, cooperative. All of us uh, ran to the cooperative. President, thank you, the international co-prosecutor. The time is appropriate for a short break. We will take a break now and return at half past 10. And court officer, please assist the civil party during the break, and also for, for the TPRO support staff, and have them return to the courtroom before half past 10. The court is now in recess. Some Jane Groucho.